a bombshell series of arrests following a number of inmate deaths at Waupon's prison. The former warden now behind bars and practices at Green Bay's own prison being called into question. It was also brought to my attention later that there were similar type incidents that have occurred at Green Bay Correctional Institution. The Dodge County Sheriff pushing for the closure or renovation of both Waupon's and Green Bay's prisons and laying the matter before Governor Tony Evers. The governor has indicated to the legislature who I have spoken with, he's not in favor of building another prison. I would ask why not? Coming up, what we know about today's announced arrests and the swirling questions around the fate of both Green Bay and Waupon's prisons. Balance News and severe weather coverage. This is Fox 11 News at 5. Another shakeup for Wisconsin's prison system. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. The former warden of Waupon Correctional Institution finds himself behind bars, and so do eight other employees. It's all connected to the deaths of four inmates. Warden Randall Hemp is facing one felony count of misconduct in public office. His arrest comes after he recently resigned from his position. How did this happen, and why did this conduct go on for so long? Fox 11's Ben Krumholtz was at today's press conference in Dodge County. As the charges were read, he brings us the facts. Four inmates at Waupon Correctional Institution died during an eight-month span starting in late June of last year. The Dodge County Sheriff's Department has been investigating the deaths and revealed Wednesday afternoon nine employees will be held accountable with criminal charges. These people were not cared for. And they are people. They were not cared for at Waupon Correctional. The manner of death for the first inmate who died was ruled suicide. The second was an accidental overdose. The third was natural and the fourth was ruled a homicide. The charges against the prison employees are only for the third and fourth deaths. The third suffered a stroke, but Sheriff Dale Schmidt says routine checks weren't done on the inmate and warning signs were ignored. Evidence shows that the decedent was dead in his cell at least 12 hours before he was discovered. Sheriff Schmidt says the fourth inmate was ruled homicide primarily due to dehydration and malnourishment. Water was shut off in his cell for significant periods of time and he wasn't served nine of 12 meals over a four day period. Correctional officers failed to conduct required rounds on numerous occasions. However, staff intentionally initialed that rounds were completed when they were not. And supervisors were aware of this practice occurring regularly. I don't think that there was any intent in these cases. I think this is purely one of neglect. Some of the issues happening here are similar to what inmates have been complaining about for the past year at Green Bay Correctional Institution. The state has confirmed both have been under what they refer to as a modified movement, a type of lockdown that includes limitations on things like showers, outdoor time, and visitation. They were investigated in Brown County. No criminal charges were filed in those incidents, and a stern warning was issued by the investigator to the Department of Corrections, meaning this is not isolated to one facility. Sheriff Schmidt says Department of Corrections Secretary Kevin Carr resigned three days after a phone conversation detailing what investigators determined was happening in Waupon. I do not find that to be a coincidence. Deputy Secretary Jared Hoy was named Carr's replacement less than two weeks ago. Why are you optimistic the new secretary can get this on the right track? I'm optimistic that uh, he has provided me with, with uh, the right things so far. Um, that's to, yet to be, to see, to be seen. Um, he has been very open and honest with me. He has been uh, accommodating um, to the, the needs that we have had. Governor Tony Evers is requesting the Sheriff's Department here keep its investigation open while federal and internal probes continue. However, the Sheriff says they feel they've conducted a proper investigation for everything under their purview, but would be willing to reopen any case should more information present itself. In Dodge County, Ben Crumholz, Fox 11 News. Ben, thank you. The sheriff detailed a long list of recommendations to improve safety 
including renovating or building a new prison. He would also like to see body scanning technology to keep out contraband. As Ben mentioned, eight others are charged connected to this case. Three face a felony count of misconduct in public office. They are 35-year-old Correctional Officer Sarah Ransbottom, 41-year-old Correctional Officer Jeremy Chalker, and 39-year-old Correctional Officer Jamal Russell. Jamal Russell is also facing a felony count of abuse of residents in the president, prison. So are five others, and they are 50-year-old registered nurse Gwendolyn Peachy and 47-year-old registered nurse Jessica Hosfeld, 29-year-old correctional lieutenant Brandon Fisher, 27-year-old correctional sergeant Tanner Leopold, and 31-year-old correctional sergeant Alexander Holfelder. Governor Tony Evers issued a statement following today's charges. It reads in part, we have an obligation to make sure that people in our care, officers and staff, and our communities are safe. And that the criminal justice system must hold every wrongdoer to account. You can read the governor's full statement within this story on our website at fox11online.com. Were you aware of the investigation into the Pond prison deaths before today? I was. I heard about the investigations. I don't know anything about them, but I did know that there was something going on. Yep. All right. Uh, we got Dodge County Sheriff Dale Schmidt said there were similar circumstances at GBCI to what happened in La Pond. Do you believe there should be charges filed against GBCI employees? I'm personally not aware of those details. Um, those aren't shared with me, so I can't say they should or should not. I do know that the conditions within that prison are very much the same or worse than they are in Waupun. But I don't know any, I'm not going to say there should be an investigation into GBCI. And have you been in contact with the Brown County Sheriff to look into the conditions at GBCI? We've been talking a lot over the years, over the last nine years, we've talked about uh, the condition of GBCI with Sheriff Delane, with the governor, with the Department of Corrections, with state legislators. Uh, it's in terrible shape, and it can't do its job, much like the sheriff from Dodge County said today in his press conference. Yeah. Um, the Dodge County Sheriff publicly called out Governor Evers, as you have, mm -hmm. and asked him to replace GBCI and Waupon. Do you plan to go back to the governor and urge him again to support a new prison? That is an ongoing effort that won't end until GBCI is closed. It's something that has to happen. I was very happy, quite honestly, to hear someone from outside of the Green Bay area and the sheriff from Dodge County bring that up. And when you have law enforcement officials like the sheriff from Dodge County, like Sheriff Delane, they are in the business. They are in those places. They know what they're like. Listen to the professionals and do what's right start having conversations, and as the sheriff in Dodge County say, said, save lives. We're losing lives. These places are not meant to do what they need to do today. They require too much staffing, too few staff are there, and the conditions themselves are terrible. So I think it's a tremendous opportunity to really open up the discussion and instead of going back and forth saying it should be closed, it shouldn't be closed, let's sit down, talk about it, and do the right thing for the people of Wisconsin. Yeah, do you think today's news gives your argue argument more weight? Boy, I sure hope so. And you hate to have people die in order to elevate a conversation. But when that does happen, it has to elevate the conversation. People have to listen. The governor put out that he wants the investigation to remain open at the state level. That's great, but we know what we know right now. We know three people are dead in Waupun, at least. Uh, people have died in Green Bay Correctional Institution, and I'm not going to fault staff. That's not my job, but I will fault the facility because two state studies have said Green Bay Correctional Institution needs to be closed. I guess besides that, is there anything that you wanted to add? Just that it is so important for us to get away from the rhetoric of politics, to really look at the people's lives, 
that these institutions are impacting because they are impacting the lives, literally, of those in custody. They are impacting the lives of those who work there. And they are impacting the lives of the families of the incarcerated. None of them are being impacted in a positive way. It's all in a very negative way. And so let's be proud of Wisconsin. Let's stand up. Let's do the right thing. And let's have the rest of the country look up to us uh, for, for a state that will stand up, do the right thing, and fix the problems we have. Uh, were you aware of the investigation into the Wapan prison deaths before today? Yeah, I wasn't aware, but the Dodge County Sheriff had it right. The time for half measures are over. It's time to close GBCI in the Wapan prison. Uh, so Dodge County Sheriff Dale Schmidt said there were similar circumstances at GBCI to what happened in Wapan. Do you believe there should be charges filed against GBCI employees? Well, I'm not sure about charging employees, but I can tell you certainly uh, Department of Corrections and Tony Evers should be charged. Uh, they have been derelicts in their duty, and uh, we're facing millions and millions of dollars of lawsuits in addition to jeopardizing the safety of those inmates and staff every single day. And the, the time for half measures is over. It's time for us to move forward with a plan that includes the closure of those two 18, 1800s for facilities. Um, have you been in contact with the Brown County Sheriff to look into the conditions at GBCI? So I met with the Brown County Sheriff uh, just a couple weeks ago, and he's in total agreement that uh, the issues at GBCI are unsustainable. It is an unsafe, unstable facility, both operationally and architecturally. And that's why, uh, you know, uh, Sheriff Delane, as well as now Dodge County Sheriff, have agreed that it's time to close GBCI, it's time to close uh, Wapon Prison. Uh, all right. Last one I got for you, really. Uh, the Dutch County uh, Sheriff publicly called out Governor Evers, as you have, and asked him to replace GBCI and Wapon. Do you plan to go back to the governor and urge him once again to support a new prison? Yeah, so I have spent eight years working on this issue, and uh, while the governor has continued to rebuff those uh, requests, and he has recently declared that he has no interest in closing uh, prisons, uh, you know, the reality is, it's my responsibility to keep on fighting for this issue. This is too important. We have uh, over $100 million of operational expenses. The safety is routinely being jeopardized. And uh, GBCI in particular, only 5% of that building is not in need repair. So there isn't a single square cell in that building that doesn't need some sort of work. Uh, the only answer at this point after this many years of neglect is to replace the facilities. All right. And then does today's news give your argument more weight? I tell you what, I was surprised and encouraged that we have a sheriff who oversees one of these buildings finally come out and say what I've been saying for eight years, that it's time to close these uh, crumbling facilities. And uh, he hit it right on the head. If we close to build one, we can save probably on the order of $40 million a year just in operational expenses. And so that's a tremendous saving to the taxpayers in addition to increased safety uh, and security for the inmates and staff. Um, that's all the questions I had. Was there anything else that you wanted to add? Well, let's be clear that this issue isn't going to get better without action. Uh, I've been saying for years that that is a ticking time bomb, both GBCI and the issues at Wapon. And we are starting to see those percolate into, into the real world here. So I'm not sure how many deaths, how many lawsuits, how many staffing issues we have to deal with. Uh, before we have a governor who's willing to make a decision, the right decision on this, it's time for the governor to put politics aside. We need to be making some strong, real changes as it relates to the, our prison system.